I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the swing arm bearings on your sport quad. Now these bearings, they need to be in good condition for your suspension to work correctly. And if you think they're bad, I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can check that. Number one, you can raise the rear wheels off the ground and rock the axle side to side or the back of the swing arm. You can grab on there. And if you feel any play in these bearings, you definitely need to get them replaced. Now, the other time you're going to be looking at them is when you're re-greasing these or like us we had our motor out and we just noticed that there's a ton of rust in here so if you see rust or any other damage you definitely want to replace these so now that we've made our checks and we know these bearings are bad let's go ahead and get started to get our bearings replaced we went with the tusk swing arm repair kit that's going to come with the bearings our collars thrust washers our shims and the seals that we need now besides that you want to inspect the slider on your swing arm and if that's bad get it replaced ours is actually a roller so that's what we're going to be replacing on ours and if you need any of these parts you can find them on our website to start out we have our swing arm on the bench already now if you need to know how to get to this point you're going to want to check out any of our atv axle bearing replacement videos so we have a general one for sport quads and then we have a lot of specific axle removal videos so you're going to need to do that and then remove anything that's attached to your swing arm so on that that could be things like your shock or shock linkage and then you're going to want to remove the pivot bolt as well and this should slide right out so to get these bearings out what we're going to have to do is remove these collars on the ends so these ones are actually over the seals and everything some of them will be pressed into the seal or pushed into the seal. And as you pull that out, sometimes there's going to be washers or bearings underneath. This just has a washer right here. Then we've got this rubber seal that just pulls out. Sometimes you're going to have to use either a seal puller or a screwdriver to pop those out. And then after that, we're going to remove the collar. We have a chain roller here that I'm going to remove. Typically, you'll have a chain slider here and you only need to remove it if it's worn out and needs to be replaced. Now on the inside, we have a couple of seals right here. We need to pull them out. And as you pull everything apart, you're going to want to pay attention to how deep these things are pressed in. So you can see the seal, it's just below the surface at the bottom of the taper on the inside diameter of that swing arm. I'm going to use a seal puller to remove this. So since we have this plastic bushing in here, I don't really want to be pressing the metal bearing out with the plastic because it's probably just going to crush this. So I'm going to start from the other side. I'm going to get the right size driver. This is the Tusk swing arm bearing tool. So to use the Tusk swing arm bearing tool, you want to make sure this stepped collar on the driver if it's nice and snug into your bearing, which it does, then the outside diameter, this is skinnier than the inside diameter of our swing arm. So it's gonna press through, we're good there. Then you're gonna take one of the nuts, put it on your all thread, and we actually wanna apply some grease to this. Then we have our thrust bearing. So you can see this is a multiple piece design. So this outer shell, it comes around the corner, that side, you want against your driver and then the split side you want that to sit against that nut so we're going to install this into the swing arm and then as everything comes out you need a socket that's going to catch that bushing and bearing so you want this to sit around the outside diameter of your swing arm So we're going to push that through and then you can put the nut on the back side or if you have room I recommend putting one of these washers on the back side. We've already greased these threads. We're going to hold that with our wrench and then we're going to tighten down this outside nut and we're going to pull that bearing through. Now with this again we're pulling it through this way because we have the plastic bushing right here but if you don't have that, it's probably gonna be easier to pull your bearing to the outside and you just reverse or flip how you set up the tool. So you can see these drivers aren't long enough to press the bearing all the way through. So once you've got 
the first driver in most of the way, you're gonna wanna add another one to that, get some length on there. We'll set the tool back up and we can finish driving everything out. And if you're pulling everything out this way, you're gonna have to pull one bearing out at a time. And if it's one of those longer bearings, you're obviously gonna have to use a deep socket and make sure you're pressing out to the outside. So we've got that bearing out, and now we just need to do the same steps to the other side. Once you have everything cleaned up, we recommend looking at your service manual and seeing how far they want you to install those bearings. For us, we're installing this outer bearing two millimeters deep and then that inner bushing, we're gonna push that in 10 millimeters from the end of the swing arm. And we're just gonna use a digital caliper to measure that. And I'm actually gonna put a marking on the tool to measure or to let me know when I'm at that depth. But if you don't have man a manual or don't have access to one, like I mentioned before, hopefully you paid attention to how deep the bearings were. So I'm just gonna put my calipers at two millimeters. We'll use the depth gauge and a paint pen. You could use some tape or a Sharpie as well. And we're gonna go to 10 millimeters. So now I'm gonna take the new bearing. I'm gonna pack this with some grease. And some of these bearings, they're gonna have a little plastic insert. And when you, when you remove that, some of those needles can actually fall out. So you wanna be careful with those. And again, make sure they're packed with grease. And then I like to put just a little bit of grease on the outside of the bearing just to help it press into place. And from here, we can set the tool back up. So again, we're using the same driver. We've got it marked. And this outside one, that's gonna be the two millimeter depth. So we're gonna go just barely to the end of that line. I've got my all thread. And then depending on what swing arm you're installing the bearing to, will determine which washer you use. This one, the smaller washer is gonna work. You're gonna put a little more grease on these threads as well. You're gonna put the nut on the back side. And then on this other side, we're not gonna have enough room for an extra spacer. So you can either run another washer or if you have different spacers, you can put them on there. I'm just gonna put that thrust bearing on thread the nut all the way down. And then once you have everything almost tight, you wanna square up the bearing. That way it drives in straight. And once you have it squared up, all you have to do is tighten down these nuts until you just reach the end of that mark. So right there, we just reached the end of our mark. So now we can remove the tool. Now for the bushing, it's the 10 millimeter mark for our machine. I'm gonna slide that onto the driver. I'll set that in place and we're gonna thread everything together. I just left the nut and that thrust bearing. I just left that on the all thread. And then again, just make sure everything's squared up and you can tighten your bushing or bearing into place. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. One thing I do wanna mention with this is this is gonna be one of the smaller swing arms since this goes to our Yamaha blaster. But if for some reason you're working on something where you don't have a lot of space there, before you start driving the bearings in, you wanna verify that you're gonna be able to drive something from the inside if that's what you need to do. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to drive it in from the outside first and then do the outer bearing. The next step is to install your seals. So, the inner seals versus the outer seals a lot of times are gonna be different. So these are the outer seals on ours. And this flat side is gonna be facing out towards the sides of the machine. And then on the other side, it's different. It has this double lip that's gonna face in towards the swing arm. And then these two inner bushings, or sorry, two inner seals, one side is closed, the other side is open. So the closed side is gonna face away from your bushing. But again, that's why you wanna pay attention when you're taking everything apart and make sure you put things back in the same way that you found them. And if you have any questions, again, refer to your model specific service manual. So I'm gonna start installing these inner seals 
and I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the outside of these, again, just to help those press in. And then once everything's in, we'll grease that inner lip. But with these, if you are confused about the orientation and you can't find a manual for your machine, typically the closed side is gonna be facing away from the bearing or bushing or whatever you have. So just be aware of that. But to install this, you can use a small bearing driver or for us, I'm actually gonna be using a socket. So you wanna find something that fits that outside diameter. This has a little metal ring that we're gonna be pressing against. And sometimes you can just press these in by hand or you can get an extension, stick it through this bearing in here and press it into place. But the easiest, easiest way for me to get this squared up in there, I'm gonna use this tool again and just pull it in. Now for our sail, this is barely gonna sit past flush on the swing arm, but some of these are gonna sit in there a few, maybe five millimeters. So again, it's the same thing with the bearings, you wanna measure your depth. And we've got those same steps on the other side. Now before I install the outer seals, I've got to reinstall this roller. So if you had a chain slider that was bad, you wanna go ahead and replace it. So now we're ready to install the seals on this side. So if you have the type with the metal ring, you're gonna to wanna to, going to want to go ahead and press that in the same way we did on this other side on ours. But for us, you know, it's just the soft rubber material. You wanna make sure you have grease on that. And then make sure your collars are clean. And we're just gonna have this stuff ready to go. We've got our spacers. So this side is gonna be the shorter spacer. And I never applied grease to that inside seal yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna put some grease on that bushing as well. And we've got those same steps on the other side. Then we can grease up these spacers. I'm gonna slide this in place. I'm just gonna twist it past that seal. Push a little bit of grease out. Make sure you wipe that up. And then if you have this other style of seal, what you wanna do We've got this thrust washer. We're gonna make sure we have this greased up. This is gonna go in that cup or collar. And we've got some grease on this seal. Gonna put just a little bit more, a little extra. You wanna use plenty of grease because we all know how often these bearings get serviced. Then I'm gonna set that in place in here. Now you do need to be aware that some of these kits, they're gonna come with shims and that's gonna take up any free play side to side and make sure that your swing arm is correctly aligned in your machine. And if that's the case on your machine, you do wanna reference your model specific service manual for instructions on how to do that. So from here, I'm just gonna press this collar into place. We're gonna work that seal on at the same time and make sure the collar is pushed or the spacer is pushed all the way against the collar I'm gonna wipe off any excess grease and then do the same steps on that other side. And that's it, that's all there is to replacing the swing arm bearings on your sport quad. If you have any questions about this, leave those down in the comments below. And if you need bearings or any other parts for your machine, we've got a lot of options on our website. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.